Let's learn about some MCQs on respiratory system. Question number one. In which part of the respiratory system gaseous exchange takes place? Option A, alveoli, B, pharynx, C, larynx, D, trachea. As these are the organs of respiratory system, the gaseous exchange takes place in the alveoli. As alveoli are surrounded by the tiny capillaries through which the exchange of gases takes place between blood and the lungs. Which of the following is released out during the process of respiration? Option A. Oxygen B. Hydrogen C. Carbon dioxide D. None of the above The right option is C. Carbon dioxide During the process of respiration, the human beings inhale the oxygen and exhale out the carbon dioxide. Question number 3. The tiny air sacs present in the human lungs is called Option A, alveoli, B, bronchus, C, bronchioles, D, all of the above. As already discussed, the tiny air sacs that are present on the tip of the bronchioles are known as alveoli. These are grape-like clusters and they are surrounded by tiny capillaries in which the gaseous exchange takes place between the blood and the lungs. Question number four, which of the following functions by filtering and keeping the mucus and dirt away from our lungs? Option A is cilia, B bronchioles, C hairs in the lungs, D all of the above. So the right option is option A cilia. Cilia are the hair like projections that are present in our upper respiratory tract and it helps to keep the dirt away from our lungs and they have the forward projection movements through which the dust particles are removed through sneezing and coughing. Question number five. The total number of alveoli present in the human lungs is estimated to be around option A 1 billion, B 800 million, C 500 million, D 1500 million. And the right option, the correct number of uh, approximate estimate number of alveoli present in human lungs is 500 million. So 500 million alveoli are approximately that are present in the human lungs. Question number six, the exchange of gases between the external environment and the lungs. This term will be known as a respiration, B. External respiration, C. Cellular respiration, D. None of the above. The correct option is option B. External respiration. As the gaseous exchange between the external environment and the lungs, as shown here, when the gaseous we take in oxygen and then they reach to our lower respiratory tract into the alveoli, and from the alveoli, as they are surrounded by the blood capillaries, the gaseous exchange takes place between the alveoli and the blood. Oxygen goes into the blood and from the blood, carbon dioxide are released into the lungs and from the lungs, they are released out into the environment. So this type of respiration between the lungs and the environment is known as external respiration. Question number seven. Which of the following is correct regarding larynx? As larynx is one of the organ of the respiratory system. A. It houses the vocal cords. B. It prevents the invading pathogens into the trachea. C. It is an organ made up of cartilage and connects the pharynx to the trachea. And option D is all of the above. The correct option for this question is D. All of the above. As all, all, the, all options are correct, it houses the vocal cords. This option is also correct as larynx are also known as voice box and they are located in the vocal cords. Number B, it prevents the invading pathogens into the trachea as it is the upper part of the upper respiratory tract. So it helps to prevent the pathogen entry into the trachea. And option C, which is it is made up of cartilage. Yes, correct. It is made up of cartilage and cartilaginous rings and connects the pharynx to the 
trachea as before larynx there is the pharynx and then after the larynx there is the trachea so all of the options in this case are correct so the right option is all of the above question number eight which of these statements is true about internal respiration option a production of atp b exchange of gases between the bloodstream and tissue cells c exchange of gases between alveoli and the bloodstream d breathing between the atmosphere and the alveoli the right option is b exchange of gases between the bloodstream and tissue cells as in the previous mcqs you learned about the external respiration which takes place between the lungs and the environment as we take the oxygen from the environment through alveoli it enters into our blood as alveoli are surrounded by the blood capillaries and from the blood the carbon dioxide enters into the alveoli and through the lungs through exhalation they are carried out to the environment that was external respiration in internal respiration when the oxygen enters into the blood they are taken by the blood to our different tissue and cells and to the cells this oxygen is given to the cells and from the cells the base product carbon dioxide enters into our blood and from the blood they are again taken to the lungs so this respire this exchange of gases between the cells and the blood the blood stream and the tissue cells this exchange of gases is known as internal respiration question number 9 the windpipe is also called a larynx b lungs c trachea d esophagus the right option is trachea as the trachea is also known as the windpipe which comes after the larynx in the respiratory system question number 10 which of the following is correct for the partial pressure of oxygen in alveoli a less than carbon dioxide b less than the blood c more than the blood d equal to that of the blood the right option is C, more than the blood. As the partial pressure of oxygen in alveoli is more than the blood, as the blood will have the more pressure, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, waste products, that's why the carbon dioxide goes to the lungs and from the lungs they are exhaled out into the environment through exhalation. While as from the environment we take in, we inhale the oxygen into the lungs, so that's why the partial pressure of oxygen in the lungs is more as compared to the bloodstream. So that's why the oxygen diffuses out into the blood capillaries and from there they are taken to the uh, tissues of the body. Question number 11. Which of the following is a chronic respiratory disorder caused by smoking? Option A. Asthma. B emphysema c respiratory alkalosis d respiratory acidosis the right option is the disease which is caused by excessive smoking it will lead to emphysema which is the respiratory disorder in which the cavities of the alveoli are removed or are damaged as you can see here what smoking caused to the lungs as you see here after the when a person is smoking it ha, it contains the harmful particles that are trapped in the alveoli then the inflammate because of these particles that are trapped in the alveoli inflammatory response is triggered and then these chemicals dissolve the alveolar septum and then you can see here the lung cavity is lined with carbon deposits formed and so that's why these cavities will be dissolved and you can see how damaged the alveoli and the lungs will be caused by the smoking question number 12 most of the carbon dioxide produced in the tissues is transported to the lung as as a carbonates b bicarbonates c dissolved in the blood d attached to the hemoglobin and carbon dioxide is the waste product that are produced in the body and eliminated out one of the excretion system are the lungs for the elimination of carbon dioxide so how they are transported 
to the lungs in the form of bicarbonates. As you can see here, carbon dioxide, they combine with the water inside the red blood cells. There are the enzyme carbonic anhydrase that form the carbonic acid and which again dissociates into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. So 90% of carbon dioxide is transported in the blood to the lungs in the form of this bicarbonate ion. Question number 13. The gaseous exchange in alveoli is a type of A. Simple diffusion B. Osmosis C. Active transport D. Passive transport The right option is A. Simple diffusion. The gaseous exchange between the alveoli and the bloodstream takes place by simple diffusion as the partial pressure of oxygen is more in the lungs and less in the bloodstream so the oxygen will simply diffuse out into the blood. And similarly, the carbon dioxide partial pressure is more in the blood as compared to the lungs. So carbon dioxide will diffuse out into the lungs. Question number 14. Which of the following parts of the brain regulates the respiratory process? A. The vagus nerve. B. Cerebral peduncle. C. Medulla oblongata. D. Cerebellum. The right option is option C. Medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is the part of the brain that regulates the respiratory processes or you can say that which regulates the respiration question number 15 which of the following membrane encloses lungs a pleural membrane b pericardium c perichondrium d periostinum the right option is a pleural membrane the membrane which surrounds the lungs which encloses lungs as you can see here in which the pleural fluid is present that is that has the function to protect the lungs from damage or injury so this membrane which surrounds the lungs is known as the pleural membrane question number 16 the alveolar epithelium of lungs is a ciliated squamous B. Non ciliated squamous. C. Non ciliated columnar. D. Ciliated columnar. And the right option is B. Non ciliated squamous. As the upper respiratory tract was ciliated, but the lungs are non ciliated. The reason is that the gaseous exchange takes place in the lungs. So if the lungs had cilia, it may cause interference with the gaseous exchange. So that's why the lungs are non ciliated to facilitate it with the gaseous exchange. Question number 17. When trying to determine whether a breathless patient has obstructive or restrictive pulmonary disease, option A, it is necessary to make measurements of airway resistance and lung complaints. B, a peak expiratory flow rate above the predictive value indicates restrictive disease. C, the most useful test is the, forward, is the forced expiratory spirogram. D, Inspiratory wheezing would be expected in obstructive pulmonary disease. As determination, uh, they have asked about which test would be used to determine obstructive and restrictive pulmonary disease. So the right option is C. The most useful test is the forced expiratory spirogram, which is also known as the apparatus is also known as spirometer, and the graph which is obtained by the spirometry is known as spirogram or spirograph. So in which the person exhaled out maximum air and inhaled the maximum air. So this maximum inhalation and exhalation, the graph is obtained, is obtained and then the graph is analyzed through which their values would tell you about the, the patient have. If these values are not in the normal range, which is uh, about uh, 70 to 80 percent, if it's the values are below or and above, it indicates the obstructive and restrictive pulmonary diseases. So that there is the or correct option is the C in which the test spirometry or the spirograph is used to determine the obstructive and restrictive pulmonary disease. Spirometry can measure all except A IC, which means inspiratory capacity, B ERV, which means expiratory reserve volume. C. FRC, which means functional residual capacity. D. Vital capacity. E. TV, which means tidal volume. 
as the spirometry can measure all these volumes and capacities except for the residual volume residual volume is the amount of air that is always present in the lungs in spite of the maximum air which is exhaled out this residual volume of the air it is always present in the lungs and it helps to prevent the lungs from the collapse so the spirometry can measure all except for this residual volume for which we have the other technique which is known as plethysmography which can measure this residual volume as well so the residual volume when we measure the capacities this functional residual capacity it consists of residual volume and this expiratory reserve volume so frc is the correct option frc is not measured by the spirometry as it contains the residual volume the spirometry does not measure the residual volume so spirometry will measure all except this for functional residual capacity because residual capacity or residual volume is not measured by the spirometry it will be measured by the separate method which is known as plethysmography which is known as the respiratory functional test question number 19 the c-shaped cartilages rings around the trachea are open posteriorly to a allow for expansion of the esophagus during solving b allow the vocal cords to relax c prevent food from entering the nasal cavity during swallowing d prevent food from entering the trachea as the th so the right option is option a the function of these cartilaginous rings as these are c shaped c shaped as they are not rounded they are c shaped at one side they does not have the cartilaginous rings because the esophagus is present over there and when the food passes through the esophagus through the process of peristalsis there may be the indentations so that's why it is made flexible to allow the passage of food to pass through the esophagus so allow for expansion of the esophagus during swallowing question number 20 a decrease in ph also known as uh, and it will cause the person to a acidosis hyperventilates b acidosis hypoventilates C. Alkalosis hyperventilates. D. Alkalosis hyperventilates. And the right option will be as a decrease in pH is known as uh, decrease in pH is acidic. So the term will be known as acidosis. And in acidosis, the person retains the carbon dioxide by the lungs. So the retention of carbon dioxide, it will try to maintain the pH. So that's why the person hypoventilates. So when there is acidosis, there is the hypoventilation to retain the pH. So there is the retention of carbon dioxide. So it will try to balance the pH. So that's why carbon dioxide elimination will be less in acidosis. So acidosis and then the person will cause the less breathing. It will try to maintain the pH through hypoventilation. Thank you for watching and keep watching to learn more.